Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh I bid to my respected lecturer Madam Suzy binti Manurudin and to all my fellow friends My name is Amir Haikal bin Abdul Hamid and I am the group leader of this assignment As you can see on the screen Our topic is a discretionary service that has been performed by city councils This talk is being conducted by my honor group members and I which is Khotrunah Dafiji binti Mama Hanafiya Mama Azri bin Sa'dun Ni Auza'i Hazib bin Ni Cairo Without wasting time, let's begin with the first part The first part of this content is the introduction City Council refers to the municipal authority that administers a city or in Malay we call it as Majlis Bandaraya In Malaysia, there is a total of 19 city councils that the council duty is to look to the city goals, major project and infrastructure development improvement by a strategic planning. Local government involvement is becoming a vital in the era of growing urbanization and globalization. For instance, the increasing number of populations. However, in this particular content, we are going to elucidate pertaining discretionary service that has been performed by three different city councils, namely Kuala Lumpur City Hall or we call it as a DBKL, Malacca City Council, MBMB, and Johor Baharu City Council, MBJB. Each of this part will explain in detail regarding the project or activity carried out by the city council. Next, I will continue with the background of city council. So the first city council is Kuala Lumpur City Hall, which is DBKL. Kuala Lumpur originated as a tiny hamlet and has developed to become the nation's capital and largest city. Kuala Lumpur has developed into a center for a wide variety of socio-economic activities, including COP including commerce, finance, administration, education, culture, and sports. Although Kuala Lumpur is alluded to as a city or town center exposed to the diverse built environments, DPKL has never stayed away from its responsibilities and duties as a city council to assure people that its province has always been in the uh, designed, uh, designed condition in terms of in infrastructure, infrastructure development and others. For instance, discretionary service that have been performed by them. I will continue with the next city council which is Malacca City Council MBMP. So Malacca City Council known colloquially as the historical Malacca City Council and it is a local government entity responsible for the administration of Malacca City and surrounding portions of Malacca Tengah District. It was officially granted the status of the city in 2003 by the federal government. So the MBMP is led by the current mayor which is uh, YP Datuk Zainal bin Haji Abu in managing the city council. So the MBMB functions lies in handling city planning, land management and evaluation, local and international relations, information technology and innovation, and more. And the last one is Johor Bahru City Council, which is MBJP. On 1st January 1896, Johor Bahru was proclaimed as the state capital and administrative based on uh, based of the Johor Darul Taksim State Government. So Johor Bahru is witnessing a massive economic transformation and has been classified as one of the cities, other than Kuala Lumpur and Kota Kinabalu. So the foundation of Iskandar Region IM has resulted in uh, numerous developmental benefits and most notably uh, the confidence of the local local and foreign investors to participate in a variety of high-impact projects in this area. Although rapid development creates urban issues, it is believed that a holistic and balanced approach will contribute to a sustainable environment capable of meeting the needs and uh, aspirations of all citizens. Next, I will continue explaining the first discretionary service performed by the City Council. So the first point is landscape beautifi beautification. So landscape beautifying efforts have a, a significantly positive effect on, on the urban area's well-being. And it is a vital aspect of preserving the landscape sustainability uh, during an area's development. So Johor Bahru is one of the municipalities that is undergoing ex extensive infrastructure and landscape transformations. MBJP has made a concerted effort to decorate the quantity and the quality of uh, for landscaping elements with the aim of adorning an environmental conservation. 
MBGP is committed to assisting in the management of development through the enforcement of landscape plans. For instance, MBGP has implemented various landscape conceptions such as the one at Bandara Johor Bahru. Likewise, landscaping is carried out not just by the uh, Johor Bahru City Council in the south but also by several other city councils including Kuala Lumpur City Hall which is DBKL. DBKL is the City Council of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Due to the city's excessive rapid development, ecosystem stability is vital. So the BKL has cultivated and maintained um, innumerable green plants in the area encircling Kuala Lumpur to preserve the ecology while also beautifying the area's landscapes. In addition, Malacca City Council, formerly known as Historical Malacca City Council, and it is a local government entity responsible for the administration of Malacca and also is one of the city councils that emphasize on landscape beautification. As a corollary, landscape management is a high concern for the area city uh, council. So Malacca's landscape is not just floral but also uh, prosperous as is the scenario in other advanced nations. For example, recreational tourism locations, especially in Center 1 Malaysia, Klebang are among the areas targeted for the beautific beautification of MBMB. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nick Alzai Hazik Beni Khairul and I am the presenter for this slide, which is Parks and Leisure under the discretionary services performed by city councils. In any given city, recreation and leisure are more essential than ever to our physical and mental well-being in today's fast-paced culture. This is because uh, these discretionary services are carried to provide city inhabitants leisure activities and give big impact to the lives of the residents there to live a healthy lifestyle. For example, the MBJB which is Johor Bahru City Council owns Hutan Bandar Johor Bahru which is actually the place which is actually a place that is used the concept of family recreation park in a cozy, friendly and harmonious natural setting. It strives to provide recreational and leisure facilities for Johor Bahru citizens at varying levels. Next is the DBKL, which plays a vital role in ensuring that the neighboring community has a vigil or park that can be used optimally for social activities in Kuala Lumpur, which is called the Taman Tasik Titi Wangsa. There, the, Kumu, the, the Kuala Lumpur City Hall has been actively developing abandoned mining sites as well as providing a recreational areas in open spaces and housing in order to provide a recreational activities among all classes of people throughout the territory and gain better attraction due to renovation made back in 2019. Lastly, the MBMB does also indeed have a recreational park in Malacca that is a focal point for the locals. The Taman Rekreasi Bukit Serindit is one of it and it also is actually a recreation area located on the Malacca Tengah district of Malacca. The public park there makes a socialization, the socialization of the three main races which is Malay, Chinese and Indians possible than ever before and now named as the Papadwan Recreation Park because of it. And that is all for me for this slide. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Azri bin Sadun and I will continue to present about the discretionary service performed by City Council, which is Lampos Beautification. Lampos is an irreplaceable component to any cityscape since its creation to replace lanterns on the reach a higher place as a source of illumination during the night. Those days, Lampos are the norm in any urban environment and yet they still fulfill the simple task of shining paths, walkway, road, and high road. Public lampposts provided by the city council highlight the need of lampposts as a perception of safeness for its citizens, while also give the air to attract opportunities of tourism. Managing the state of lampposts are the duties handed over the local government regarding their respective area. For instance, MBJB will manage the whole street lighting infrastructure in Malaysia under the auspice of the Malaysian Public Work Department JKR. Aspect that should not be overlooked when it comes to the Lampos beautification is how well it is preserved by the citizen. The condition, design and features of the Lampos installed need to be taken as factor that will determine the general outlook of hospitality of the area governed. Furthermore, the design also symbolizes the identity of the city council. For example, Blaka City Council planned their Lampos beautification design to highlight the history of the city of Blaka. 
Next, I will continue with the next point which is sports and open space. For public protection and enjoyment of unique values, public open space or sports is planned and managed for current and future gener generations. So the benefits of public open space and uh, sports can be classified as social, economic and environmental development by the city council. For example, Dataran Bandaraya Johor Bahru or Johor Bahru City Square is the main square in Johor Bahru introduced by the MBJB. So Dataran Bandaraya is a large field that can be used for sporting events uh, for uh, or public gatherings. In addition, the square is frequently used for MBJB events as well as sports competitions such as color runs, football tournaments and others. So the concept of an uh, eco-friendly and user-friendly park is being attempted to be applied to the people near Johor Bahru uh, um, to provide comfort for them. Next, Kuala Lumpur City Hall, which is DBKL, has provided a plethora of sports and sporting facilities as well as open space to encourage public participation in healthy sports and sporting activities. Pantai Eco Park, for example, is an open, open space where people can engage in various types of sports and leisure activities. And lastly, MBMB provides open space for Malacca residents and visitors who are affected to engage in sports or other suitable activities. Dataran Satu Malaysia is one of the interesting places in Malacca that you should visit if you are on vacation in Malacca. So the MBMB is open and spacious environment is very um, beneficial to residents and visitors whether from, from the states or not. That's all for me. Usually, cycle path can be categorized as a pathway or a particular paved space or hallway created or given specifically for cyclists. By integrating convenient cycle pathway, it can boost the mobility. To boot, it also feasible to enhance the efficiency of public transits. The main objective of this activity is to establish a way that is scaled for cyclists and to be more structured outline. For instance, Majlis Bandaraya Johor Bahru, or we call it as MUJB, has implemented cycling path through the city and residential district in Johor Bahru. Thus, throughout such a project, foreign countries can be perceived that Malaysia or the city council has demonstrated effectiveness of not just profit maximization but also of social welfare. Hence, programs such as provision of road pavement will aim at increasing public amenities and benefit the society in that particular area. Now, we will move to the City Council Discretionary Service Comparison. And now we'll talk about the Kuala Lumpur City Council DBKL. DBKL is the body that manages the capital of Malaysia Kuala Lumpur. With that, we can see that the DBKL implement all aspects found in the discretionary service as a city that is the economic centre of Malaysia. DBKL needs to implement initiative to preserve landscape beautification to attract tourists and encourage social welfare of the people surrounding. For instance, DBKL has planned to turn Ali in the Golden Triangle in the pocket of sunshine. This to encourage more people to live in the city centre and attract tourists to visit all the parts of the federal capital. Secondly, the BKL also implement various initiatives in the framework of park and leisure due to the increasing number of vehicles entering and leaving Kuala Lumpur every year. Moreover, the BKL is essential for the procurement of road pavement which include allocated paths for pedestrian, bicycle and bus. With a high population density and heavy reliance on public transportation, the BKL should indeed implement this endeavour. To boot, the BKL also implements sport and open space as an effort to overcome social problems in a high density area. In addition, sport facility developed by DBKL will also be used by the government for official event and private government program such as sport festival, seminar and so on. Finally, in the aspect of Lepo's beautification, in the discretionary survey performed by DBKL, they have also implemented this initiative to support this matter. Overall, as a city with a large population of 1.9 million and having additional income allocated by the government, allows them to perform all the discretionary surveys that have been discussed. Since Johor Bahru is a mixed-use development, MBJB focus on discretionary surveys such as park and leisure maintenance, lane post beautification, and also road pavement provisions. MBJB prioritizes the program or activities which will benefit neighborhoods since Johor Bahru is a city with diverse housing and building development. MBJB has made a major contribution to the Johor Bahru area by devoting extra funds in implementing discretionary services.
Among the initiatives that might be noted are the enhancements of the landscape of Jobaru, for instance, Jangabe and also Hutan Banda, which are the places that located in Jobaru that we are implementing from the MBJB to greening and more beautifying the landscapes, for instance, the, the greening plants and others. In addition, the lane post beautification made by MBGB also can be clearly seen around Jobaru cities. MBGB provides a bed lighting with the use of LED and also creates the unique design of the lane post in order to bring the identity of Jobaru. Lastly, the implementation of the road pavement. This is another step to make the city more developed and be aware from other This is due to the fact that the location of Jobaru which is located near to the Singapore By this, Jobaru, City Council or MBGP are pushed to be more developed the place of Jobaru to be more conducive with all of the technology and also infrastructure development to provide the development that bring I shall now continue this presentation on the slides about City Council comparisons, which is the Malacca City Council. The Malacca City Council is the body responsible for managing the city, which houses the administrative centre of the state government and the tourism based economy. Therefore, they only perform some services at their discretion according to current needs namely the beautification of landscapes, gardens, and recreation as well as the beautification of lampposts. First, the Malacca City Council places great emphasis on landscaping and lampposts to ensure the continuity of their tourism activities in the state. For example, we can see the MBMB implement mural, mural projects in public areas in Malacca City which not only helps generate the economy but also reduces crime rates. Next, the MBMB's lamppost beautification will always ensure that the lamppost is in good condition and even decorate it to be the part of tourist attraction. For example, a tourist state MBMB has implemented the installation of decorative lights to Jalan Merdeka which is in Taman Melaka Raya by the Visit Malaysia Year 2020. Moreover, the park and leisure aspect is also taken into consideration with various projects in the coastal waters of Kelebang as an additional effort to ensure the resilience of the tourism industry of Malacca City. MBMB also ensures that the provisions of road pavement is improved from time to time to facilitate the business and movement of tourists. However, the Malacca City Council is not active in implementing discretionary services involving sports and open spaces. The proof that we can see that there are only a few sport complexes under the management of MBNB. Conversely, to other cities councils such as the MBJB and the DBKL which have various places or facility that can be accessed for sports and recreational, recreational activities. Overall, as a tourist city, MBMB needs to implement discretionary services that can boost the economic activity there. In conclusion, discretionary functions are a service that is only considered essential for local government to provide something extra to taxpayer. However, it depends on the ability and financial capacity of local government and no one can legally force them to carry out this function if they lack of the means. Therefore, we can see how the city council discussed, namely DBKL, MBMB and MBJB implement the discretionary service list starting from landscape beautification, park and leisure, lamppost beautification, sport and open space and also provision of road pavement. The results show that DBKL implement all aspects of discretionary service because they have the capacity in terms of finance and current need of the high population in Kuala Lumpur. Next, we can see as a tourism city, MBMB only implements some aspect of discretionary service they are able to provide benefits to their tourism sector. And also, lastly, as a city that house the state administrative center and house high commercial activity, require MBJB to implement project or activity of discretionary service to provide benefits to the community around Johor Bahru. To close, apart from ensuring that the socio-economic development policies implemented are fair and balanced, 
as well as complete infrastructure facilities that are modern and perfectly implemented, the City Council must also consistently strive to implement discretionary services because it also helps in developing the city they manage. And that is all from our group for this presentation. Thank you very much.